and uh, he's going to be chatting to us about his country and uh, what it is that uh, his country has got to offer the rest of the world, but in particular us here as South Africans and uh, how long he's been here. We're going to be having all those chats about all of that. We've actually had some chats offline and uh, some interesting conversations that we had were in, uh, conversations about how many rivers there are in his country. He says mm -hmm. there's uh, a little over 10,000 rivers in his country and the country is uh, covered mostly in forests. About 40% of the country is covered in forests which makes hunting also a very big um, activity in his country. But here to talk to me more about everything else in his country, um, Ambassador Alexandra, good afternoon and welcome to the show. Good afternoon, thank you. Thank you for inviting. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, interesting chats that we've been having uh, uh, while we're all off air. And um, I'm actually very excited should to we, find out. Should we repeat it on air? We're going to repeat <laughs> a lot of it on air. And I'm actually excited to, to, to speak more about uh, your country, Belarus. It was actually my first time really finding out about Belarus. And uh, I'm glad that we are, we are in this position where we can talk about this. And um, you mentioned something interesting that your country is centrally positioned in all of Europe. It is basically in the heart of Europe, which is ironic because we are in Bloemfontein today. We are in the heart of South Africa ourselves. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit of something that we have in common there. Now getting into the first question, um, with regards to Belarus, what would you say is a big business in Belarus that makes you stand out from the rest of the world? Uh, first of all, uh, as, as we already discussed, we um, used to be assembling a line of the uh, former Soviet Union and uh, uh, gaining our um, independence in 1991. We managed to uh, preserve uh, and uh, modernize and develop um, uh, heavy machinery industry. Uh, we managed to develop uh, agricultural machinery uh, industry. We managed to uh, invest and develop a lot in um, uh, agriculture itself mm -hmm. because we are also um, uh, we produce a lot of agricultural uh, products. Uh, so uh, because of that, um, uh, we right now uh, one uh, of uh, most export-oriented countries in the world, mm -hmm. and we export about 60% uh, and even more of our GDP, of all that we produce, we Gee. export. That's, that's big. Yeah. Now, you speak of um, agriculture being big, which is ironically, again, it's one of our biggest things in South Africa and in the Free State. Um, what in agriculture are you big in? Is it, is it in uh, terms of uh, livestock or is it in terms of uh, food that you plant? Uh, both, uh, but mostly uh, livestock, uh, cattle breeding and uh, uh, production of dairy products. Okay. So, for uh, in particular dairy products, we uh, possess 15th place in the world mm. in the volumes of export of dairy products abroad. Okay. Uh, and uh, for instance, we have uh, fifth place uh, in the world in exports of butter, like mm. seventh place in the world in exports of cheeses. Mm. So um, that's uh, uh, these figures show the development of this. In, that's yeah. uh, we invested not only in agriculture itself, but what is more important in processing industry to yes. to export more uh, value-added products yes. than to sell raw materials. You know? uh, mm. I mean, I can imagine if you're big in dairy products, in, uh, in butter and cheese, though, that's a lot of um, investments in the processed food uh, yes. department. Yes. Now, South Africans as well, um, with our skills and expertise in the farming industry, are there opportunities for us that side um, that we can look into in terms of trading with you, or maybe perhaps that you are taking advantage on this side uh, that you are exporting to your country? Uh, I would uh, I would say that we have like opportunities from both sides mm -hmm. because uh, South Africa in particular you have also very well developed agriculture yes um, maybe what you need more uh, you need more to support uh, new young farmers uh, black farming mm -hmm. uh, these uh, type of businesses and for these you need more uh, agricultural machinery. Mm -hmm. That where, uh, 
where we can uh, help, uh, help each other, each other yes. and uh, we already started this. So uh, during our meeting with your executive, new executive mayor, mm -hmm. I mentioned uh, in my conversation with him that we have plans to set up in South Africa a, oh. an assembly line of uh, production of our agricultural tractors. Right. Yes, and uh, this uh, idea and this project, I, I hope it will be implemented uh, soon, very soon, maybe next year. Mm -hmm. You will have first um, uh, Belarusian tractors on uh, South African soil. Yeah. But the, um, the whole idea is that it will be South African tractor because these businessmen and these business people, it's a huge South African holding, agricultural holding. Mm -hmm. They have plans to outsource spare parts. They will start from uh, our kids. Yes. We will bring these kids to South Africa, but uh, later and gradually they will try to replace some parts which can be produced locally. For sure. Uh, outsource these parts from local businesses, what, what will create uh, more jobs for, for local companies. Yeah, basically broaden the, the, yeah, the spectrum yeah, a little yeah. bit more for other businesses to jump in. Yeah. And speaking of, you know, um, people physically being able to participate in business between Belarus and South Africa and development uh, of skills and trades. Um, we spoke a little bit about the fact that there are actually South Africans in Belarus who are out there studying and um, who, what are they studying? Uh, why would they be studying in Belarus in particular? Uh, uh, starting from the end, uh, why? Because we have very good educational system. Mm -hmm. and very competitive educational system. Uh, a lot of universities uh, and the speci specialization of these universities are very wide. St uh, from uh, agricultural uh, institutions mm -hmm. to mechanical engineering to IT sector, which we are very good in, as mm -hmm. we uh, discussed, to medical um, universities. We have four medical universities um, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, thousands of foreign students study in, 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 in these uh, universities from South Africa and uh, as I said they are all from as we know from Free State yes, yes, so this yes. was a project of uh, several years ago so we have um, uh, right now about 25 uh, 30 students mm -hmm. studying half in agricultural university and half in our IT uh, yeah. university now the IT sector as well uh, I mean Belarus is actually uh, from a business point of view you're you're big on your machinery development and um, can you walk us through that what is it that you guys are very famous for from a machinery uh, a part of things and how competitive are you globally uh, yes um, the uh, several uh, several uh, branches. Uh, first, of course, uh, we um, have a big uh, heavy-duty dump truck production plant mm -hmm. for quarries, for mining industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have here more than 50 machines working in South Africa. Uh, from uh, These are Belarus machines that Belarusian, are working in the mines in South Belarusian Africa. machines uh, working in South African quarries, yeah. um, carrying uh, coal, carrying uh, ore, carrying uh, other mineral resources uh, yeah. from uh, uh, 90 ton uh, payload capacity to 250, uh, 240 ton payload capacity. These machines are real and you can see them in, in your country. And, and these are the ones that are in South Africa, from 90 to 140 No, uh, no, no, not, not, not 140. 140 is the uh, Guinness record. But 140 uh, is the Guinness record. Yes, yes. Uh, the biggest work in here is 240. 240. Tons. 240 tons. Jeez. Yes, yes, yes. And, um, I mean, th this is new information to me. Uh, I know of the other competitors more than I know uh, of, of your, your brands. And is there a plan to aggressively market what you do to the rest of the world and uh, get everybody to know more about this? Uh, we do. Uh, we have this company. It's very well established already because uh, we started to sell our equipment at, we, and set up the company, this company more than 20 years ago. 
Africa. In South Africa. In South Africa. They okay. work uh, more than 20 years. They work. They promote uh, their trucks. Yes. They service their trucks. They bring new ones. So this is a, a very well established, one of the well uh, established B Belarusian businesses in South Africa. Now, in terms of skills development, that particular country, I mean, that particular company, I beg your pardon, um, are they working with South Africans who are employed in their company, who are learning about the machinery, of course. how it works, and servicing yes, and all of that? Yes, yes. A lot, a lot, because uh, mostly um, director and some uh, engineers, some uh, technicians are from Belarus. Yes. The others are locals, the, the drivers of these trucks, the yes. mechanics, uh, the, uh, and they are trained locally. So the company does this training. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And um, with that said, if, I mean, that country has managed to uh, open business in South Africa and they're doing business in South Africa. If I'm a South African business and I'm looking for opportunities in uh, mm. Belarus, what kind of industries uh, could I look into in terms of Belarus that maybe perhaps we are really good at and we can add value to your country? Um, uh, as I said, uh, agriculture, you are very good in agriculture, mm -hmm. so uh, maybe your technology, technologies will be useful there. So uh, IT sphere, as we discussed, uh, is very uh, so, and IT sphere is, uh, is a sphere when you can find a lot of yeah. uh, connections and ties and interests uh, uh, mutually beneficial for, for both sides. For instance, we mm. also have here a, a representative office of one of our biggest IT companies. Mm -hmm. They work here, they offer their products here, so it, it may be vice versa. Yeah. So it's uh, because, um, as I uh, mentioned, we um, uh, started this um, development of IT business in Belarus many years ago and we created special uh, conditions for uh, IT companies, mm -hmm. uh, 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 taxation uh, incentives, other, other privileges they have. Yes. Uh, that's why um, I, I, this sector is booming like, like right now yes. in Belarus. Right. And uh, if uh, when we started we exported couple of million of dollars of products mm -hmm. um, a couple of years ago we expo exported like two years ago we um, uh, overcome one billion dollars uh, in export of IT products made in Belarus this one billion of product hold on is it between South Africa and Belarus no or no, is no, it no, no your no, global, this, your global, global export of yes. our IT um, uh, industry now, take me back to your missionary, um, your, your missionary sector, right? And uh, over the years, you and your country have managed to upgrade your missionary industry thanks to the, uh, uh, to the increase in your IT, um, your, your IT capacity. How has that relationship between IT and machinery uh, truly advanced you and where are you looking at over the next 10 years? Um, I would say that this is like a direct correlation mm -hmm. between uh, good education, mm -hmm. which we have in the country in, diff in, in mechanical engineering, in IT sphere, and uh, the uh, uh, well modernized and well developed uh, uh, production industry. Yeah. Um, uh, machine building and uh, uh, car production, tractor production, uh, all these industries. It's direct, uh, direct link. I would yeah, say. yeah, yeah. And um, another thing that we as South Africans import virtually everything is the car production uh, side of things. You mentioned that 60% of your uh, of whatever you produce is exported. What do we have in South Africa from uh, cars? Do we have motor vehicles that are uh, created in Belarus in South Africa at we the moment? We don't produce uh, passenger cars. Okay. We produce only um, uh, freight car, trucks. Right. Trucks. But the point is that uh, we have uh, different uh, traffic rules. Okay, yes. We drive from the left. Yes. I mean, we drive from the from, from the, the right lane. lane we you, drive on the drive left lane. lane. Yes. So, so and technologically, it's not very easy to uh, uh, to switch, to switch uh, production from. But um, uh, several years ago, we certified um, uh, three three trucks. Okay. Uh, we have Minsk automobile plant, mm -hmm. um, uh, and uh, they certified three trucks for 
particular South African market. Okay. And uh, right now we're trying to promote this, but the um, uh, market, South African market of uh, freight trucks is very competitive. So it's, yeah. um, you have everybody yeah. here and you have a lot of uh, assembling uh, plants from uh, world producers. Uh, Volvo, Mercedes, Mercedes uh, MAN, mm. everybody is here, uh, like right now Chinese companies, Indian companies, yes. Tata is here, so it's very, very competitive. So now, it's funny you should mention that. The reason for that is because of the harbors, which are a gateway into mainly SADC region, other countries, Zimbabwe and Botswana and all of that. And um, that is because we are positioned strategically because of that. You as Belarus, Strategically, strategically positioned in the middle of Europe. What competitive advantage does that give you in terms of trading and what, uh, what, what are you trading? Um, very good. So we use these, uh, uh, in history, you know, um, this uh, location uh, brought, uh, brought wars and everything yes. because all wars rolled over our country twice, from west to east, and then from east to west. I remember so, when I was Napoleon, a child. Napoleon War, yes. I'm starting from uh, even from Middle Ages. Then Napoleon Wars, then sec First World War, Second World War. Yes, yeah. it, it was a huge disadvantage of being in the middle of, yeah, for sure. of the continent. Mm. Uh, but uh, right now, of course, as, uh, as we have peace in Europe after the Second World War, and we um, developed our uh, logistic uh, services because we have direct routes from uh, Western Europe mm -hmm. to Russia, yes. from Russia back to Western Europe, and then again from uh, north to south, south yes. from Norway to the Mediterranean, uh, to the Black uh, Sea and Mediterranean Sea. So uh, we have logistics hubs, different, uh, a lot of logistics company, uh, logistic companies work in Belarus using yes. this uh, location. Strategically, yes, because strategically, of the connections yes, yeah. of everything, yes. Mm -hmm. And um, in 2022, next year, um, do you have any big business events that you're going to have either in Belarus or maybe perhaps in South Africa where South African businessmen and women can come and have conversations and understand more about your country? Uh, yes, uh, we usually have a, a exhibition and fair calendar mm -hmm. which is uh, approved by the end of the year. Okay. So in the end of this year we will have the full list of uh, exhibitions and fairs which will take place in Belarus next year. Uh, I would uh, say that we have um, very famous and very popular um, agricultural exhibition when you can uh, see both agricultural produce mm -hmm. and agricultural machinery mm -hmm. production. And yes. Everybody is there, for instance, this year uh, we brought a big delegation from Africa, mm -hmm. uh, not from South Africa, unfortunately, but from Mozambique. Uh, they visited this exhibition, yes. and um, on the margins of this, uh, close to this exhibition, we also held second Belarus Africa Economic Forum, okay. uh, represented mostly by uh, African ambassadors, mm -hmm. um, resided in, in, in Moscow and they are accredited uh, to Belarus yes. concurrently, so they came and visit and then um, uh, reported uh, to their capitals about the opportunities. Uh. How important is Africa? Um, I mean, you say there was a Belarus-Africa summit. That gives me an indication that Africa is uh, specifically an, a, an important region for you. Um, how important is Africa and uh, what about Africa makes, ma makes it um, business sense for Belarus to trade with Africa? Uh, it's very important and uh, this importance is growing uh, mm. steadily but surely because uh, uh, markets here are very consuming. Yeah. Uh, uh, not only in South I, not only in South African region, but the whole continent. Yes. Uh, a lot. A lot of uh, developments uh, are here right now in Africa and um, of course uh, you need, countries here need uh, a lot of uh, consumer products but most in, 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 uh, investments, 
mm -hmm. and um, uh, machinery mm -hmm. which are not uh, made here. So you have to import so far this, yeah. this machinery. So we are right here. We are the country who can uh, provide you with all these um, assistance. Yeah. And who do you, uh, what's your approach when you come into the country? Uh, you come into the country, we are Belarus, this is what we have on offer. Do you partner with South African businesses to work or do you mainly say we would like to set up our own business and uh, move in, uh, this is how we work? Any, any I would say any, uh, any variants uh, suitable for businesses. So mm -hmm. in case of our uh, heavy duty dump truck company, yes. they work on their own because it's very specific. It's uh, uh, even very specific to find uh, specialists, engineers mm -hmm. in, the, in this sphere. Uh, uh, with this um, uh, tractor uh, assembling project, we will uh, uh, cooperate with uh, local mm -hmm. uh, South African uh, agricultural holding mm -hmm. because um, uh, after assembling, they will take care of service of the of sales of these uh, tractors, of service of this tractor. We will help them with training, with everything, but mm. this will be their business. Okay, all right. And um, are there bilateral agreements that are in place that makes it easy for trade between South yes. Africans and... and yes, uh, sure, uh, yes. We have all necessary agreements. We have uh, trade, uh, trade and economic agreement with uh, South Africa. Uh, we have uh, um, investment uh, protection agreement, bilateral with South Africa. Uh, we have double taxation agreement protecting businesses. So Can any any uh, any uh, legal uh, means are in place. Okay, I was actually about to say. Can we uh, uh, divulge a little bit into the investment protection and uh, the, the 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 tax conversation as well? Yeah. Why? Can you expand a little bit on that? What do you mean by that? Uh, that, uh, for instance, double double taxation agreement means that. Yes. If a Belarusian company uh, uh, is doing business here yes. and uh, paying taxes here, they will not pay taxes uh, at home. Okay. And vice versa. Yes. If a South African company is doing business, they will not. They will, will pay taxes there uh, only f on only their businesses uh, in Belarus, and that's it. And not in South Africa. No, not in South Africa. This is the uh, sense of uh, these double taxation yes, protection sure. agreements. All right, that's, that, that sounds pretty awesome. And the same with the investments that um, uh, state guarantees the safety of investments and return mm -hmm. of investments in case some uh, company de decides to withdraw mm -hmm. investments. So this, uh, this is also the mutual protection of these investments. And in terms of financial support institutions, mm -hmm. um, if a uh, South African company has a business plan that makes sense, is a financial support institu is a institutions that can give financial support to those businesses? Uh, yes, and that's because, again, because we are so export-oriented country, we created a financial mechanism to promote our exports. So mm -hmm. if a South African company um, decide to, to, to do business with a Belarusian company in, in uh, supplying here and in, in importing here again, mm -hmm. uh, agricultural machinery or trucks or so any, any, any goods produced in Belarus, mm -hmm. uh, our, we have a Development Bank of Belarus, All right. uh, which provides uh, uh, loans, export loans, and export uh, leasing programs, there are export leasing programs, mm -hmm. uh, with very uh, favorable uh, interest rates, very low, not like commercial banks, they are very low, okay. because we are interested in, in promote our exports. Yes. So we provide this uh, favorable financial uh, mechanism for, mechanisms for, mostly of course, they will be provided for local businesses. Mm -hmm. But local business, <coughs> should guarantee the return yes. uh, in, in fi because uh, usually they are long-term loans for five years, mm -hmm. for instance, with a small, uh, with a small interest rate, interest rate mm -hmm. uh, but uh, local business uh, should be backed up with a good uh, local bank yes. who can guarantee the return of these 
uh, loans. The loan, yes. Yeah. Now, so this is how it works. Now, um, for me as a South African, if I want to go do business with a Belarus com company, what are the restrictions there? Uh, do I have to be a? Um, do I have to work with a uh, with a Belarus citizen to set up a company that side, or what are the the, the re restrictions around that? Uh, we don't have any uh, like manda man mandatory uh, rules mm. on this, so you can open set up a company uh, uh, yourself. You don't okay. need. Uh, local uh, director or local, but uh, obviously it, it would be in your well, favor to, ha to have some somebody local yes. speaking language and knowing no. local legislation and especially uh, tax legislation. Uh, you need local accountants, of course, because mm. it's, it will be too complicated for a foreigner to Absolutely. To, to understand how, how it works. So it's like obviously you need such people, but it's not uh, mandatory. Okay. Now, uh, doing a lot of business talk, uh, and um, there's also the other side that we don't really know about uh, Belarus. I mean, we hinted to the fact that you have a massive forestry uh, industry, and um, how, many, how many rivers did you say you have? 20,000. 20,000 yeah. rivers. And 10,000 lakes. Now, that already says to me, fishing must be big in your country. Yes, <laughs> it is. And uh, with that being, um, with fishing being probably big as that, you do not export any of your fish. No, we do export, but uh, not so far. We, it's because it's a freshwater fish, so yes. usually um, it should be exported like live. Yeah, sure. Uh, so th these are short, uh, short distances. Okay. You yes. can't um, bring it here for. Uh, two months in yeah, yeah, yeah. On, on, on a ship. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, and uh, in South Africa, I know that there's regions in in the in in the Durban area where if you walk into the restaurant and uh, you want fish, they send a guy into the water. He swims. He brings you the fish. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'm supposing this must be also pretty big in your in your country as well. For for freshwater fish, yes. Yeah. But we are landlocked country, so for seafood, it's it's it will be. More difficult yeah, absolutely. to yeah. catch a prawn <laughs> in Belarus. <laughs> now in South Africa, farming, uh, not farming, uh, hunting is, is, is big business in South Africa. I'm assuming with the type of land uh, landscape that you have, um, far, uh, not farming, hunting should also be pretty big. How much of that does that uh, account to your economy? And uh, this is uh, very, it might be a very interesting uh, sphere of uh, mutual interest. Yes. Because you have a lot of people uh, fond of hunting. We we've have. Got, we've got a lot of farming. Uh, yes. Uh, hunting uh, farms. Inside. Yes, hunting, and we have a lot of uh, hunting facilities. Mm. Uh, uh, what is what I am? Um, I'm going to say that um, it would be very interesting because we are abs we have absolutely different uh, nature, and it will be very interesting for local people to go there to hunt. Uh, I know bear to hunt bison or to hunt deer, and for our hunters to come here to to hunt, I don't know, springbok or. I mean, I'm uh, looking already at this yes, picture. Yes, these, these, these are bisons, yeah. and uh, you've got bisons, which is something that we don't have in yes, South Africa. Yes, yeah. And um, this, so you say it's extremely different uh, for for hunter that for side. For hunter, to it will be a, absolutely different. <clears throat> and this is an industry, um, I, I'm assuming you've got farms where hunting is legal. We have, not farms, we have um, uh, nature reserve forests, yes. uh, national parks. Okay. Um, and uh, this is where this the farming is legal. Forest, uh, yes. Uh, and hunting uh, is legal. Uh, special forest facility zones when uh, hunting is allowed and you will be provided with uh, all um, uh, guidance uh, with even you can bring your uh, weapons, your guns with you. Okay. It's, uh, I mean, it takes time and some uh, paperwork, but yes. it's usual procedure like here. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So yes, um, that's what I was also trying to get to, that it is procedural. It's not um, like uh, 
there's, there's, there's the other type of hunting that is frowned upon where you are shooting lions and, you know, uh, trophy hunting, and that's what I was looking for. But um, for your territory, this is procedural. This is, you need to be, have a legal license to go do it. You don't just go and shoot yeah, anything. Yeah. No, 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 of course. You, yes. you need the license, and uh, foreign t tourists, they are, uh, all uh, usually come with, in organized groups, yes. and they will be taken care in Belarus with accommodation, with providing everything they need. Now, speaking of accommodation and um, traveling to, uh, to, to, to Belarus, and um, your capital city is Minsk. Minsk, right? yes. Yes. Uh, in 2014, you tell me that you held your own um, ice hockey world championship. World championship, yes. Which is something really. very foreign to us in South Africa. <laughs> we don't have yeah. ice hockey. You, you had your own uh, football World Cup. In 2010. in 2010, yes, it's very similar. So uh, every country um, uh, try to 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 be well prepared to uh, build uh, tourism infrastructure, hotels mm -hmm. uh, like uh, stadiums, uh, everything for uh, to uh, accommodate all fans who who are coming for uh, like football events or yes. ice hockey events. So the same, we use this opportunity. We um, uh, built a lot of hotels, modern, mm -hmm. uh, uh, different uh, level hotels, yes. so you can choose from three star to five star yes, yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. At, your, at your own uh, expenses. I suppose all that legacy that you still have, um, it allows for me to book a flight to go to uh, yes. Belarus for holiday, yeah, to go sure, either sure. hunting or... Uh, hunting and uh, along with hunting. Uh, we have um, a very interesting, uh, we have ecotourism. Ecotourism? Ecotourism. Okay, when what people who, who uh, don't want to hunt, they, mm -hmm. but they can go to nature to, yes, to, to yes. see animals like you have here, safari drives. Yes, yes, but yes, you yes. can You can go not with a gun, but you can go to, to see these animals yeah. in nature, um, birds, uh, birds watching or animal watching or just to visit, to stay on a, on a bank of a uh, lake somewhere in the yeah. middle of the forest, uh, just to, to breathe fresh air, to enjoy uh, staying in a quiet yeah. uh, natural surrounding. That's also one of the type of tourism we uh, promote. Yeah. I have to squeeze this in as a, as a boy from South Africa who loves the warm weather. <laughs> how cold or how warm is it in Belarus? Uh, I was at home um, uh, because of lockdown. Uh, we skipped last year. Last, uh, year. Yes. So I haven't been for two years. So I was in home this July and we had 36 degrees. You had 36 degrees? Yes, we okay. had 36 degrees. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like uh, uh, it was a record. But this is summer yeah. high in, in July in our uh, in summer, uh, yes. our region. Mm. Uh, in winter, uh, this winter was not very severe, but several days we had minus 15, minus, minus 20. <laughs> yeah. A lot of snow. You got but uh, people enjoy. Uh, uh, also, it's very nice to go uh, outside to go to the forest yes. when it's uh, when when trees are covered with covered with snow. It's so beautiful and so quiet. It's, uh, it would be interesting yeah. for me as as uh, I've never lived in but that setup. We yes. have a saying that um, uh, 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 northern man is not uh, who uh, doesn't uh, fear f uh, cold. Mm. Uh, Northern man is a man who has warm clothes. Ah, okay. I get you need it. warm clothes, and that's it. And you sort it, you find. Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, we've basically come to the end of our conversation. It's been really interesting uh, finding a, a, a little bit more about Belarus. <laughs> Thank you very much for um, sharing all the insights and thoughts. Now, just in closing, if South Africans want to get in touch and uh, they want to explore some of these conversations that we had, maybe perhaps for the 2021 workshop, 2022 workshops that we're going to have, how can they get in touch with you? It's very easy. We are uh, open and uh, we welcome uh, anybody, tourists or business people, uh, to our embassy. It's in Pretoria. We have a website. Uh, you can find uh, all uh, details uh, there. We have a Facebook account, uh, everything. We're open. Come to the embassy. 
Uh, if you have any questions or interests, we will discuss with you. We will give you an advice. Thank you. Perhaps I should have asked this uh, even right at the beginning. When it comes to visa applica applications, what are the restrictions there for me as a South African to travel to that side? You need a visa, mm -hmm. uh, but recently we are opening up, and this is our policy to open up. Uh, so recently a new, uh, new amendments were uh, adopted, mm -hmm. uh, allowing South African citizen to go uh, to Belarus without visa oh, wow. for 30 days, okay. uh, but on one condition, if you have an open uh, multiple uh, Shannon visa, All right. European visa. Yes. So if you have this visa, so you can go to Belarus without a visa. If you don't have a Shannon visa, you can come to the embassy, you will bring invitation from somebody or from your partner in, 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 in Belarus, yeah. business partner, I mean, or, or from a, you can buy a tourism voucher from a tour, tourism company. Okay. They will send us confirmation and we'll, we'll, we will wish you, issue you a visa in, in, in three, in five days, in three days. If oh, you wow. Need, okay. If you need it. That's, that's incredible. All right, uh, so the ambassador has just shared with us um, all the information that he possibly can, but we will be sharing some of the information as well on your screen as to how you can get a hold of uh, the Belarus Embassy in Pretoria and uh, also online as well if you're not in a position to travel at the moment, uh, how you can get in touch with him online. And uh, this has been an inc uh, a, a, a broadcast from our Bluffington studios at uh, Free State Online. My name is Bangim Sikinya. Thank you very much for tuning in and uh, have yourselves a fantastic day. Thank you.